So this week, uh, purely because of the episode number, we wanted to talk about uh, sixteen. Yeah, we wanted to talk about Wheeler Walker Jr. because. Honestly, when we started the podcast, we were I just kind of numbered out the episodes and we kind of listed who we wanted to talk about and so we just kind of go down that list. And when we got into like the 50s, I was like, "Oh, I got to save 69 for Wheeler because that was <laughs> I think that was back like right when old Wheeler came out and I was just like, "Oh yeah, we got to talk about that." But since then, I just don't give a shit about Wheeler. Like <laughs> this <laughs> I just don't yeah, care. I, I'm <laughs> I I just at this point is it's like uh I don't know. I I respect the shtick, you know. And then, uh, you know, spoiler alert to anyone who's listening who is afraid of the fourth wall being broken. Uh, but I respect <laughs> the shtick from the perspective of Ben Hoffman, the comedian who has an this appreciation for country music. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, like him being a comedian who who really likes country music, and so Kentucky. he wanted to make. Well, yeah, and so he wanted to make music that is actually country sounding but then he's doing it from a set you know satirical perspective i respect the hell out of that and i do think he has certain songs that kind of have a cleverness to them but there is certainly a uh i i find it tiresome to listen to too much in a row because (laughs) even though each one has very clever lines in them they are yeah. pretty much the same fucking song. Over well, that's over. well, that's the thing. I feel like uh, he's really gotten this trend where he's like, "The word pussy is my word," yeah. and I'm using it all the time. I yeah. feel like if he diversified and started saying other things, yeah. uh, you could he could still be you know overly sexual or whatever. Uh, but it, it seems like every word. Or every song, he's just like, okay, this is where I'm going to put a line about pussy. And this is where I'm going to put a yeah. line about and pussy. It's like, dude. Yeah. Like, you have, especially like, so the the one song that comes to mind first is Summers in Kentucky is like a legitimately <laughs> good country song. Yeah. <laughs> and then it seemed like he, he, he was like writing it. And then he's just like, all right, I haven't dropped put the pussy bomb yet. Yeah. So here it is. And so like, it, it's one of those that... It, I still feel like you can listen to that song and be not paying attention too much and you mm-hmm. could totally miss it. Yeah. Uh, and it's a really well done song. Um, but then it's just kind of like it, it, it like sticks out like, Oh shit. Okay. There yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hilarious, but I mean, it's, it's, it's also just, know, it is what I it is. think it's just an, ex- another example of a guy who got lost in his character because it is kind of getting to the point where now it's just Ben Hoffman talking, but it's just him through the lens of Wheeler because yeah. He just he does get he gets like political on Twitter and stuff. It's like a comedian shouldn't or like a character a satire character should just be sticking to his shtick. But all of a sudden he's like going on Twitter and like throwing out political leanings and shit. It's just like leave that for Ben Hoffman. Like he's he's kind of Andrew Dice Clay. He's Larry the Cable Guying. Those guys are just characters that comedians yeah. created, and suddenly they have to live as that character because it took off more than their actual self. And it's just, yeah. it's kind of, it's just annoying that, like, so he's doing that. Like, he'll go on podcast, like, he, he's, he was on a Tom Segura's podcast a little bit ago, which, as we've said before, is a hilarious podcast you should listen to. It. It's called Your Mom's House. But um, he was on it, and he was talking about, like, yeah, I got a girlfriend now. It's like, no, Ben Hoffman has a girlfriend. Or Huffman. Huffman? Hoffman. Huffman. I think it's Hoffman. Hoffman. It's it's spelled Hoffman. Yeah, I don't know. But he's like, no, Ben Hoffman has a girlfriend. Wheeler Walker doesn't exist. <laughs> like... Well, that, and that's the thing that I, I thought was funny because you know, you know, picking, you know, pointing out a, another song, the song "Fucking Around," I think is hilarious, and I think it's well got done. Nikki Lane. And that's yeah, <laughs> and it's got Nikki Lane on it, but on the album, it's credited as Casey Walker, yeah. and so it's clearly this, you know, it's the shtick going further, and it's really funny to like have it presented that way and have a really good artist like Nikki Lane sing it yeah. on, you know, sing on. Yeah, it there are, yeah, there is clever stuff like that, but yeah, I just like I said, he just and then also just. I just can't stand him on social media anymore because all he does is bitch about Marshmallow, which apparently is some DJ or something. And yeah, he has gone quite down the rabbit and hole he, uh, on that. And he bitches about the Walmart yodeling kid. Like, don't get me wrong, I think his music is terrible, but dude, you are a grown man picking on an 11-year-old boy. We can talk about how his music sucks, but we don't dedicate our Twitter to it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's think it's interesting. Um because, like you said, I feel like the the character has almost uh, it, it blew up more than I feel like he maybe like had it developed in his mind. Yeah, 
you know, like to, to fucking live that all day, every day, go out on the road and be, be Wheeler so much, because so long. there's like 90% of his fans who don't know he's not a real person. Like, people think... Well, Wheeler, that's the thing. I thought Wheeler Walker Jr. was a person for the first, you know, however many weeks I was listening to him. And mm. then I realized, oh, this is just a dude pretending to be. But, yeah, there are people who genuinely think Wheeler Walker Jr. is a person. Yeah, <laughs> and the thing that also uh, I always think about is... Uh, the when he talks about his music as being you know great and good country and it's and it's clearly country you know you listen to the sound it's it's traditional sounding country music um and then he he goes on this you know on on tirades about how you know he's making better stuff than everybody who's on the radio yeah. and you know they're afraid to play me and all that stuff and it's like i i like that as a satirical bit but as it almost seems like he's actually complaining yeah, about it's how getting he doesn't to the, get radio yeah, play, it's, it's kind of like, okay, I don't. It, it's starting to not feel like it's a bit anymore. And if it's not going to be a bit anymore, then it's like, oh, is it really just singing about pussy songs? Like, yeah. Dude, and, it, it's so much better when it's a, it's a satirical jab. Because I always think about it like from the perspective of, of uh, you know, Jimmy Buffett's got a song uh called why don't we get drunk and the line in it is why don't we get drunk and screw and the whole song is a satirical take on the fact that love songs were getting more and more graphic and so he said fuck it why don't we just write a song called why don't we get drunk and screw and it's hilarious to think about it from that lens yeah. and that's how i always thought about the wheeler songs was from the lens of doing things overly sexual and and parodying you know tropes that are in country music i think it's very intelligent and very well done but once it crosses that line into this is the music, this is great, and it like it's it just, I don't know, I feel like that fourth wall has to always be up and apparent so that you can be, yeah, this is what it is, rather than Wheeler Walker Jr. is a guy, he is making his own music, blah, blah, yeah. blah. I'm like, no, no, that's, that's no. Yeah, and it doesn't help that when he goes on like other podcasts or even on his own, I haven't listened to his podcast in a long time because it got really old, but... uh uh he would just kind of he wouldn't even like he wouldn't know people's names who are on the radio now because he just he would just be like no i just like waylon and merle and willie like i just like that stuff and so he's one of those guys who's living in the past not really discovering because in his mind he's like i'm the best person out there right now he knows who like stapleton is and sturgill because i think he says what sturgill's like a cia spy or something like that or like, <laughs> like a russian spy or whatever the fuck he jokes about but like he just doesn't seem to like uh, he and then he shit talks today's music and then he goes on tour with Brantley Gilbert and Kid Rock like you can't you can't be living this whole fuck pop country fuck this shitty country and then go on tour with Brantley Gilbert who jumped the shark after his second album and Kid Rock who's he's Kid Rock like <laughs> it's yeah it's 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 Kid Rock yeah like <laughs> Wheeler has to be his own act he can't be opening for people he ha it's it's like it's i mean there are those weird shows where they have comedians open for bands which i don't know why that's ever been a thing but like he can't be a person who's seriously playing in lineups he has to be like the one con festival he was at like dirk bentley was headlining it and then he was like the midnight tent after the festival yeah. it's like that's what he has to be he's not an opener he can't be going out opening for brantley gilbert going fuck you bitch you broke my heart and like you can't do that. Like it does Although sidebar to that song, I do absolutely love that song and I think it's a tremendous breakup song yeah. uh because it it go I mean it, it goes to the place that so many breakup songs don't go to where they just he just straight up says, "Fuck you bitch, you broke my heart." And I just think it's hilarious. Um it's another one of those that, you know, he he puts his his comedic lines in there that kind of make it seem a little hokey about whatever. Yeah. Um but but as a song sonically and lyrically for the most part i'm just like yeah no this is this is good and i and i feel like if he made more songs like that that kind of have more of a i don't know i don't i don't want to say like truth but like they come from a perspective that people relate to yeah. other than like well, on his new album he just has like the song pussy king it's like okay this is just building up this character further and further uh, so that it can be this thing. 
Yeah. Whereas, or like, I don't, and, and I just got like yeah, finger up, finger up my butt and puss in boots and shit. Like, yeah, those are just dumb songs. But yeah, because I remember on one of the podcasts he was talking about how fuck you bitch. It was like it came from an actual breakup where as the girl's walking out, he just muttered under his breath like fuck you bitch. Like and that's where the song was born. Yeah. And it's like that's a genuine like it's crazy to think that his song called fuck you bitch is probably his most subtle and like family friendly song. <laughs> like it's because it's not it's well other than that one line in summers in kentucky yeah like fuck yeah fuck you bitch it's like that is the worst of it it's mostly just like you broke my heart i hope your dog never comes home like it's it's yeah. there's not really anything explicit in it other than the word fuck which who cares but like every other song is just like pussy licking sticking fingers in my butt fucking well around. And the, like it, well and that's the thing and i feel like there's there's always this line between like the good satire and just saying the words to say the words it's just you know like it's like the shock yeah value. well exactly and so like i think he's got the song redneck shit which i i i don't really listen to that much and don't don't care for totally but as a as a written song i think it's hilarious because it's basically him talking like it's a parody of the types of songs where people say how country mm-hmm. they are yeah and so he's he's talking about all these these crazy redneck things and he says i love that redneck shit but then it just keeps getting crazier and crazier and crazier <laughs> and by the end he's talking about like i'm gonna like fuck my cousin and then like all this other shit and it, it goes further and further down this line of nonsense and so from a, a satire perspective it's hilarious because he's taking this bit of this idea of of i'm gonna prove how country i am and he takes it to the fucking you mean, like, caught up in level. the country Ugh, exactly so well then so that's the thing so so he's he's clearly self-aware of that idea and so he wrote a song that's that's hilarious about yeah. it and so i feel like when he when he moved on to the second record the second record was better done in terms of the musicianship and the and the sound and all that stuff because it sounds like a very well put together album as far as the players yeah yeah um, well and dave but then there, uh, fucking produced it oh uh, exactly exactly <laughs> and so it sounds great and and that's one thing i can never yeah. take away from yeah it. they it sounds songs great. sound country like if you replace the lyrics with something that wasn't shit like they would be great songs because they sound like old school country songs it's just that the lyrics are beyond stupid um well that's the thing it, it's it yeah it i i i basically my whole thing at this point is i just wish he would be more be more satire than shock value yeah exactly and I, that he just needs to not get lost in the character and get in twitter fights with an 11 year old kid and a guy whose head looks like a marshmallow like yeah it's 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 interesting i feel like there's so many ways that he could he could play that character to, that would be really funny and uh you know he would have I don't know. I just feel like it, I feel like it could be really funny, and I also wonder if if he, if he you know he was a comedian and then he built this character. If he started playing shows and he, he just like really liked playing music, and that's why it's gone to this level of more about this character being an actual musician. I wonder if he was just like I don't want to do the Rodney Carrington. I don't want to be a comedian who also does music. Yeah. I want to do the music and actually do the music. And I feel like that's probably what happened is that he wanted to do the music. Um, yeah. But it's, well, just, it's, it's just interesting. Yeah, well, because if you really think about it, he's pretty much like Earl Dibbles Jr. Granted, Granger Smith jumped the shark yeah. into Nashville pop country, but even though his yeah. isn't nearly as bad as other artists are, but uh, Granger Smith definitely isn't what he used to be. But Earl Dibbles Jr., and thankfully, other than the fact that all of his concerts are featuring Earl Dibbles Jr. Like, yeah. other than that, like, he keeps those characters separate. He's not, like, he's not coming out at, like, what Wheeler did. He's not coming out and being like, I'm against Nazis. It's like, everyone knows you're against Nazis. Everyone's against Nazis. <laughs> Unless you say you are pro-Nazi, you are against Nazis. It's not that, like, it's not that great of a stance to take. No one likes Nazis. I don't know. <laughs> In the today's day and age, you kind of have to tell everybody yeah, exactly. that you're anti-Nazi. Yeah, yeah. Because, but though I do understand, like, because when you listen to, there are a couple episodes of Wheeler's podcast where people just ask him questions. Like he has a hotline you can call and ask him a question. 
And so many of the questions are just like, you could tell they're just redneck dudes who think Wheeler Walker's a real person. And it's just like, hey, Wheeler, why are you such a faggot? And then they're like, hang up their thing. It's like, because they think that like that's the humor that Wheeler Walker has. Like, that exactly. they think they're being as funny as Wheeler by saying that. And it's just like, these guys are taking it way too seriously. They think Wheeler's a real person. So I do appreciate that on one of his episodes. I think it was the episode he featured Kit Moore, um, which is actually a pretty good episode of the podcast. But he comes out like saying he has to come out and say he's against Nazis because his character is so explicit and so misogynistic and so not really racist, but it would seem that way that he has to tell his fans. He's like, I am not this person. If you are a racist misogynist, like asshole, get the fuck out of my concert. I do yeah. appreciate that because yeah, a character like this, it could easily be taken the wrong way where some wife beaters thinking like, this is my anthem. Like, and yeah. so it's, it is good that Wheeler doesn't like, uh, cater to those people he's like no fuck you people for being bad people yeah. like i'm not this person i know this is what i am on stage these are what my songs are about but i'm not this fucking misogynist so get the fuck out of my concert so i do appreciate that that he kind of has to do that because otherwise the character will get out of hand but it's still at the same time it's like stop with your political stances you are a satirical character like and it's just ugh. but yeah yeah anyway our our uh, podcast is anti-Nazi, so <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck Nazis. Um, you heard it here first. Yeah. Groundbreaking stance. Yeah. So this week we don't have a top five or top ten or anything because honestly I can't rank. Because as we said, I think you said it earlier. Fuck you, bitches is best song. Like it's it's yeah. it's funny. It's so catchy. I've I have caught myself saying that that phrase. Fuck you, bitch. You broke my heart more times. No, than I I, I love it. I I will listen to that song. Often. <laughs> I remember when I when I used to work at Boomba, we had a there was one day someone just had me put on my music, so I I went and I put on I think the Hodge Podcast Picks playlist, which you can subscribe to on Spotify, um, and I I threw it on, and apparently I put "fuck you bitch" on there one week because I was sitting in the <laughs> we were sitting there, all of a sudden I heard the the song playing, I was like, why is this song familiar? What is this? I just got up and sprinted over to the computer that was playing the music. <laughs> I was just like, hit next, hit next. <laughs> yeah, I, it was probably because the I, I definitely had it on my breakup songs mm. list. Yeah, that's it. Because, it, it, like I said, it is a tremendous breakup yeah. song because you can listen to, you know, like we've talked about on that episode, like there's, there's those different types of songs you want to listen to, you know, after a breakup where you want to listen to really, really sad songs, which... Kind of doesn't make sense. Listen to sad songs while you're sad so you can get sadder. But then there's also the when you're feeling yeah. starting to get out of it and you're just like, no, fuck you. And there's so many songs that are like are afraid to go there unless you're listening to like actual rap, you know, rap or rock that actually says shit. But country for the yeah. most part is pretty, you know, PG for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just great to hear a, a, a good country song that just straight up says it. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah. You broke my heart. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a song that you'd be putting on as like a comedy thing. I mean, it is a comedy song, but it is a song that can actually match that feeling. Like, I'm not exactly. going to be putting up, like, if I'm in a bad mood or a good mood, I'm not going to be putting on, like, if I'm so up, why is my, or if my dick is up, why am I down? <laughs> Which actually is a very clever fucking line. I do, I do like that one. That's funny. If yeah. And it's, up, and it's, and it is down? really funny. And that's the, and he does have, like you said before, he has so many really well written lines yeah. that are really fucking funny. And to the back, you know, with the background of an actual country song, I, I do respect it. It, it is really like what we were saying, the character gets, Gets a little much at times, uh, but he certainly he certainly knows what country is and makes it. Yeah, exactly. You can't take that away from yeah, him. Yeah, this so this episode, yeah, we didn't want to shit on him the whole time, even though it kind of seems that way. But we do appreciate him. It's just he's in such t small doses. You need to kind of take him in, and uh, yeah, he's just kind of gotten lost in the character, which is a bummer. Because when when I first wrote it out, I was like, yeah, let's talk about Wheeler. I like this song, this song, this song. They're not all great, but these ones are good. But once we got close to the episode, just seeing him bitch on Twitter, I was just like, I don't care anymore. Like, yeah. I'm over the character. He's just, ugh. And then, like, he, he uh, on some podcast, he premiered a new song. It might have been on the Tom Segura podcast. And it was, uh, like, one of his new songs that will be on, like, his third album is, like, pictures of your pussy on my phone or something like that. And it's just, like, a song about girls sending him pictures of their vaginas to his phone. And it's just like, wh Why? Like so clever, yeah. <laughs> well, that and that, yeah, and that's really the thing. Like you know, 
the it's kind of like the same way with a, a comedy set when someone's doing stand up they actually have to have a joke that is funny and it, that joke can can have or can not have you know swear words and whatever in it but just saying swear words is not funny and is not good enough and so yeah. that's really where i'm afraid Ask with Brian him is Reagan, like well, if he's he, never sworn but, in a set <laughs> exactly so like it, it, that's really what i'm afraid of is like if he keeps going forward and the people just want to hear him say the word pussy in a song yeah then he'll write just want him stupid pretty songs. much he's they did want him to dj call it himself for every time he starts a song with pussy king like well exactly and like he's like he brought up andrew dice clay like it, it, it'll get to a point where it's just like yeah the dude that says pussy on the country songs mm-hmm. say the words and we'll say yeah. them back to you Hickory at the same dickory time. Dock. like yeah he's gonna turn into <laughs> he's gonna turn into that and it's just oh oh <laughs> Oh, and I said, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. I watched, uh, this is a side tangent. I watched, like, they had a new special of Jeff Foxworthy and Larry the Cable Guy on Netflix. And Jeff mm. Foxworthy was funny because he's usually pretty funny. But I could not stand Larry the Cable Guy. I was like, how did people like this for so long? Like, his voice is just like, and I was getting the, the guitar in the game. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this is terrible. I feel like it was it was one of those things that when it happened, it was so different. Yeah. And so it was, it was like, cool to, to watch. Well, I think you he know, was this, also this clever, different... but now he's just not clever. He's just exactly. he's just, he's just it... catchphrases now. Well, and you know, it's this it's the same you know thing with with kind of all comedy uh, that that at a certain point you get too successful that you really can't you really can't have these you know daily observations mm-hmm. that the common man would have yeah. that that is is the crux of so many good jokes. Uh, and I know, like Dave Chappelle's latest Netflix special, he talked about that a bunch of times where he's just like. You know, I'm. I can't pretend I'm not me. I'm Dave Chappelle. Everyone knows who I yeah. am. You know, like he he can't write jokes the way that he yeah. used to write jokes because he can't go through life being a normal guy. Yeah, anymore. I can't remember which uh, comedian it was. They were on one of the many many podcasts I listened to, and they were talking about like Brian Regan is like the best comedian out there, but people don't recognize him so he can walk into a starbucks and he can have that everyday react or conversation where he can get material from it but they were saying like but i can't write a joke about like so i was flying coach over here it's like because i don't i either fly first class or i'm on a private jet like i can't write those jokes anymore and so yeah i think that's probably what happened with larry the cable guy and it's not gonna happen to wheeler because he's not making that money but (laughs) i'm I'm sure i'm sure he is successful but he ain't private jet successful um but yeah Anyway, um, I don't really have anything else to say about Wheeler. I don't know about you. Uh, just that I don't. I mean, I don't dislike him to the extent I feel like. Yeah, I definitely don't. We may him. have made it. We, sound yeah, we like. definitely made it seem like we hate him a lot more than we do. He's entertaining. He's just. It's a shtick that I think has gotten a little stale. But yeah, and I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a lot of cleverness to him, and I, I and I would love to see the cleverness continue yeah. to win out I'd like over to see, just I'd like to see a third album with whatever. some more clever songs, more so than, like, I like to eat pussy. Like, we get it. You, you yeah, know, exactly. Like